Are you on the fence with whether it's actually worth it to splurge on a gaming PC? Or should you just save your money and go with a console like an Xbox Series X? This video was sponsored by Best Buy and they were so kind to send me these free products to keep, but I assure you that all thoughts and opinions are my own. If you follow this channel, you already know that I do a lot of gaming PC reviews. And because of affiliate link clicks, I can see how much of each computer is sold. And nearly half of all the sales have been for the Corsair Vengeance i7-400. It's the winner by a large margin. Most of those sales have been for the top tier $4,000 model, but as of this recording, the one that we've got here for you is much more affordable. This one with an i5 13600K F CPU and 4060 Ti GPU. So technically speaking with these specs, it's more of a mid-range to low-end gaming PC compared to what else is out there. As of this recording, the Xbox Series X is way, way less expensive than the gaming PC. That is a pretty significant price gap, but there is a lot of factors to keep in mind when making this decision. And to help you with that, we're gonna be comparing their gaming library, thermals and noise levels, overall ease of use, online and multiplayer experiences, the strengths and weaknesses of both options, showing you what each of them come with and what they need, customizability, connectivity, and most importantly, graphics. And make sure to check my links below in the comments and description for the most up-to-date pricing. But first, let's rewind back into the past and check out what comes in the box with a console versus a gaming PC. Presentation-wise, consoles always do a way better job getting you excited with the unboxing experience. A pretty nice design with great imagery on almost every side. Definitely something that feels epic opening on Christmas Day. Gaming PCs, on the other hand, like the one that we got, usually pretty bland and unexcited first impressions when it comes to the packaging. Boom, what I tell you, power your dreams. We've got the Xbox boldly protruding out of this downward slope design. Now popping open the PC box, you're met with a massive unpacking instructions card. PCs will usually come with some Wi-Fi antennas and a power cable. In the smaller box within the Xbox box, you also get a small power cable, but also an HDMI cable and a controller. And then you get to unwrap it like an exciting gift within a gift. Beautiful. This is my favorite part with PC unboxings too though, removing the plastic. With PCs though, you almost always have to open it up and remove some foam before you turn it on. So we've already laid out the price for both of these, but it goes just a little deeper than that. Yes, console is cheaper, but many times PC games are discounted and cost less than the exact same game on console. Some other things to keep in mind are the subscription fees that you have to pay monthly for. If you or the person that you're buying this for plays any online multiplayer gaming, Xbox has that dilemma. A gaming PC does not. Online multiplayer on a PC is just free. Local multiplayer player is free on an Xbox though. And it's actually set up more for that than a PC is. Many games that you can play on both the PC and the Xbox only have the option for two player split screen versus four player. And some just removed split screen multiplayer altogether on the PC. Some of those games can still technically work with split screen multiplayer after jumping through some hoops, but I really think that should be an option by default. Ease of use is a completely different story. It is very, very easy to install games and find games on the Xbox Series X. The carefully organized Organized menus and optimized operating system offers the quickest way to get up and running on your favorite game. Just the boot up time getting into Windows on some PCs takes longer than someone going from console off to actually being in the game. The user interface to get you from point A to point B on an Xbox Series X is intuitive, designed really well with cool animations, and just a better experience visually as well. With gaming PCs, there's a lot more factors involved that you'll want to keep up to date on in order to avoid any errors or issues. Like Windows updates, graphics card driver updates, BIOS updates, and all of those graphic settings options. Massively tunable graphic settings is a huge plus for a lot of people though. It makes things more complex, yes, but it's one of the major things that I love about PC gaming. You rarely get any control whatsoever on how a game looks or performs on a console like an Xbox Series X. Here's a few examples of the level of graphic setting customizability of some of the most gorgeous games. That is a lot of options. For PCs with really beefy GPUs, 
GPUs, you can game at 4K with the highest graphic settings and still get way above and beyond that 60 FPS that most console gamers play at. Even with lower end graphics cards on a PC, if you're someone that cares more about the gaming advantage that you get with smoother gameplay, you may be happy with cranking your graphics settings all the way down to something more bare bones in exchange for better accuracy. This goes way beyond in-game customizability though. Pre-built gaming PCs like this Corsair Vengeance i7-400 that are completely compatible with non-proprietary components can have all of their parts decked out or swapped out as you go along, keeping it looking and performing fresh. Upgrading to more powerful components gives your PC longer legs as well. I'm a sucker for LED lighting too. That can be customized in the IQ software to anything that you want as well, or even sync it with your games to match what you're playing. You can also customize performance profiles on your PC, which will let you tune your fans based on whether you're looking for something that's quiet but hotter temperatures and a weaker performance, or if you don't mind louder fans and prefer cooler temperatures for the maximum performance. After a long session of intense gaming, this is the loudest the Xbox Series X got as opposed to this gaming PC which got this loud while gaming within the performance fan mode. As much as you may want to keep those fans in quiet mode indefinitely, you won't really be getting your money's worth in doing so, and it will still generate a pretty good deal of heat. Extended periods of time in hotter temperatures will shorten the overall lifespan of your computer. You can see in our thermal imaging time lapse from the moment they were turned on to when they were fully engaged in gaming, how hot each of them got after an extended period of time. You may be surprised to see that the Xbox Series X actually seemed to get hotter than the gaming PC, despite it pushing a lot more power than the Xbox. This is due to superior liquid cooling and extra fans. It also allows gaming PCs like this one to push that power even harder without overheating. If you get a PC that can handle that glorious ray tracing in the graphics settings and still hit over 60 FPS, shoo, it's enough to make your mama slap a chicken. With PC, the sky is the limit with how great you want your games to look. Careful though, if you're getting this for your son or daughter, upgrading your PC is an addicting practice. They will always want the shiny new graphics card because of how much of a difference it makes on the way a game looks and performs, especially at higher resolutions. This is some gameplay from a few of those games with this PC, along with their FPS. You can see here in this chart what kind of an average FPS that you can expect for each of these games at their highest preset settings at three different resolutions that we extensively tested them at. When it comes to peripherals, many game PCs don't come with any, and the ones that do usually stick you with something that's not that great. So you'll probably want to get your own gaming keyboard and gaming mouse. Many gamers, after gaming on both PC and console will collectively agree that a mouse and keyboard provide higher precision, more customizability, and better accuracy. Last but not least, what you need to consider is the library of games. New Xbox games are all available on the PC with Xbox Game Pass. If you have both an Xbox and a PC, your one game purchase will work on both. A large percentage of old Xbox games are available on Game Pass as well. But the Xbox can't even come close to the probably over 100,000 plus games that the PC has amassed in their library over the years. Hardcore PC gamers can also mod games to their heart's content on the computer. What you see is kind of what you get on the Xbox. You can even set up emulators on the PC, play games from all kinds of older consoles for the more nostalgic gamers. Overall though, when weighing all of these factors, the clear winner for me is the gaming PC, even after you factor in how much more expensive it is. I am semi-biased though, having a YouTube channel that's dedicated to creating content for gaming PCs, but still, there's just so so much more that you can do with a gaming PC, even outside of gaming. They're extremely valuable for creative work as well. If you're a 3D artist, animator, or editor, powerful PCs will not only be helpful for you, but they're necessary. If you finally made your decision to purchase the Xbox Series X or the Corsair Vengeance i7-400, then please remember to use my affiliate links in the comments and description below, as I get a small commission at no cost to you for every single purchase made. And it's actually a major factor in keeping this channel going and getting better and better for you. Also remember to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date with all of my latest tech and gaming PCs. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. God bless.